the open sea, turbulent, violent, unceasing, ruthless, but this is a ship's natural home. So what happens when you must keep Britain's most famous warship docked ashore, century after century? When the ship's dry docked in 1922, she's actually put on her supports that are spaced more or less as they would have been for any typical ship docking. So these huge steel cradles sit around about six metres apart. That's fine for a ship that's going to be in dock short term, probably five years, maybe even ten years. But beyond that, we get to get very long-term sag and deformation in the oak timbers and the teak timbers of which she's built. And she's starting to bend and sag in between these cradles. All that meant the need was clear and urgent. What wasn't immediately clear was what should replace the giant cradles that have held victory in position since the 1920s. The solution? A new system of supports, adjustable stainless steel props, 136 in all, to be fitted at two levels all around the ship. They're telescopic and in fact they've got a load cell um, at the bottom and we can monitor the load on the prop uh, all the time, 24 hours a day. Uh, the idea is if, if the load does vary, uh, we can actually come down and uh, readjust it and put the load back or repair the ship in that area. The team have had to have a care not only for Victory, but also for the dry dock in which she's birthed, the oldest in the world. A laser theodolite is used to pinpoint the precise positions in which the new props must be placed. Loadings will be monitored to keep the right pressure on Victory's hull at all times. All with one key aim. Stop the ship moving, get her in a stable condition and allowing us to move on to undertake the necessary work of conservation to ensure that the hull is here for the next 250 years. <laughs>